Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to a new series. Now, for those of you waiting on Laravel, the premium course, the crash course, and the YouTube project should all be released within the next few weeks. So in this series, what we're going to be doing is creating a Node.js and Express application from absolute scratch. So the idea of this series is to be very, uh, very beginner friendly and to be kind of a continuation off of my Node.js for beginners crash course. All right, so after people finish that, this gives them the opportunity to actually create a project with Node and uh, Express and a bunch of other technologies. Okay, so this will be from absolute scratch. We're going to start on a machine that doesn't even have Node.js or Express or MongoDB installed. We're going to go through the in uh, installations. We're going to set up the environment. Um, and then there's going to be no generators, no copying and pasting. Uh, the goal of this is to write and explain every line of code so that you guys can really grasp what's going on as opposed to just watching a demo of an app being built. All right, so if you have a little experience with Node and Express and, and MongoDB, that's great. If you don't even know what those are, I would suggest watching uh, these three videos here. They're, they're on my channel. Um, I would suggest watching those before attempting the course or the series. All right, now as far as the application goes, it's going to be very simple in terms of functionality, uh, at least at first. We're going to be able to create, read, update, and delete articles stored in a MongoDB database uh, from our Node and, and Express app. All right, so let's take a look at some of the technologies that we'll be using and learning. So Node.js and NPM. Node.js is a JavaScript runtime and server-side technology. And it comes with NPM, which is Node Package Manager. And this is used to install modules like Express and thousands of others. Okay, so Express is a back-end framework for building powerful applications, web applications. Uh, MongoDB, which is a NoSQL database. Mongoose, which is an ORM, or an Object Relational Mapper. And this allows our application to interface with MongoDB. We'll be using the Pug template engine for our views. Pug is formerly known as Jade. We'll be installing Bootstrap a few videos in, and we're going to use Bower for that, which is a front-end package manager similar to NPM. We'll also do a little bit of jQuery and Ajax to make delete requests to our server. All right, so I try not to mention this stuff too much, but I do have a Patreon if you guys want to support this channel directly. Even a dollar per month is greatly appreciated. Uh, if there's enough people that can help out, then I'll be able to do this stuff full-time, which is my goal. And I'm also working on some exclusive content and perks for patrons. For one-time donations, I have a PayPal.me account. Um, and then if you're interested in premium courses, I have affiliate links at traversymedia.com slash courses. All right, and I will be creating my own courses very, very soon. So that's it, guys. Let's go ahead and get started on this project, and hopefully you enjoy it. All right, guys, in this video, we're going to be setting up our environment. So we're going to install a couple things to build our application. Um, now I'm using Windows because I want this to be completely beginner friendly. And I know that a lot of people that are just getting into web development and so on um, may be on Windows. All right. Uh, but this is completely cross platform. All the code we write, everything. Uh, it doesn't matter what system you're on. All right. So we're going to install a couple things. Of course, we need Node.js and uh, Node.js is a JavaScript runtime. If you have no clue what Node.js is, I would suggest watching my uh, Node for Beginners video. We're going to install that. That also comes with NPM, which is Node Package Manager. And that's a, a command line tool that we can use to install different modules like Express and Mongoose and so on. All right, we're also going to need a database and we're going to use MongoDB. Uh, MongoDB is a NoSQL database. If you want to learn more about Mongo, I'd suggest my MongoDB in 30 minutes video. Uh, I also just did a video called A Guide to NoSQL Databases if you want to uh, learn more about NoSQL in general. We're also going to be using Atom, which is a uh, text editor. This is what I've been using for the most part uh, lately. And it's, it's a really nice editor. It's by GitHub. It's very, very customizable as far as uh, looks and, and themes. And it also has a bunch of um, packages that you can install that will help you with development. So we're going to install that. And then since I'm on Windows, we need a better command line because the, the standard CMD command line in Windows is garbage. So we're going to be using uh, git bash. OK, so this right here, git scm.com, you can download it. It's going to download the git version control system along with the command line tool called git bash. 
All right, so let's get started. First thing we'll do is install Node.js. So we're going to just go ahead and click here. We're going to get the recommended version, which is at this time 6.10.3. And that's going to just be an installer. We'll just go through it quickly. All right, so let's open it up. And just go through this. We'll click next and it's going to go into your program files if you're on Windows. Click next and install. All right, and it's as easy as that. Node.js and NPM is now installed. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to install MongoDB. So let's go ahead and go to, uh, let's see, download. And there's a few steps that we need to do here, um, some of which are in the command line, but uh, it's not too bad. So we're going to grab the, um, yeah, Windows 64-bit, 2008 and later. And that's going to download the MSI file. So this is another uh, installer that we need to go through. And it is uh, 148 megabytes, so it may take a couple minutes to download. So once it's downloaded, just open it up. And we're going to go through this next. And I'm going to click custom right here because I want to change the install path. By default, it's going to be program files, MongoDB server, and then the version. Uh, I don't want that. I want it to be right in the C drive. So let's go to local C drive. And what I'll do here is create a new folder called MongoDB. All right. And that's where we want this to be installed. C slash MongoDB. We'll click next and then install. And it's going to go through the setup. Okay, so we'll click finish. Now there's a couple extra steps we need to take. We need to go into that folder that we just installed it in. So for me, it's going to be C drive MongoDB. And we're going to create a folder here called data. All right, and then inside the data folder, we're going to create another folder called DB. This is where all of our data will be stored. Now we have to uh, also create a log uh, a log folder. So let's say new folder log. All right. And then we need to open up a command line. I haven't installed git bash yet. So we'll just use the standard command prompt. So let's say CMD and we'll run that as administrator. Okay. And then uh, let's see. So I'm going to navigate to that folder. So we want to go to CD MongoDB. And we actually want to go in the bin folder. All right. If we look at what's in there, whoops, can't do that. Um, there is a there's a there's mongod.exe. That's the main program. So we need to run that with some options or some flags. So let's say mongod, and then we're going to do dash dash. Let me make this a little bigger so you guys can see it. Uh, let's see. I haven't done this in a while. Font. Let's make it 28. There we go. All right. So MongoD directory. Whoops. Why isn't that typing directory? Uh, and it's going to be per DB. OK, directory per DB and then dash dash DB path. And then we want to define that data path that we created. So it's going to be in your MongoD uh, MongoDB folder slash data slash db. Okay, that's the folder we just created. So what we're doing is we're specifying the database path as that folder. All right, or that location, then we need to specify the log path. Okay, so that is going to be C slash MongoDB slash log. And it's going to be a file called Mon uh, mongo.log. And it'll create that on its own. Then we just want to add a couple more flags here dash dash log append. We also want to do dash dash rest and dash dash install. OK, and that, and that will install it as a service so that it runs in the background. We don't have to manually start and stop it all the time and so on. So let's go ahead and click enter. And next thing we want to do is start the MongoDB service. So to do that, we can say net start MongoDB. 
okay now it says the service has started successfully so that's it mongodb is now installed it's running and we can now interact with it from uh, from our application so let's go ahead and close that up and then we're going to move on we're going to install atom which is the text editor so i'm just going to click download all right so once that's done we're just going to open that up and the atom installer is is really weird because it does everything behind the scenes you'll see this little uh splash screen and then once it's done it'll just be installed on your system all right atom is it atom was actually created with javascript it uses electron which is a, um, a javascript framework that allows you to build desktop applications with javascript which is really cool and i do have a um an intro to electron video if you're interested in that all right so it's installed atom and started it up um, i'm just going to get rid of this stuff this is just because i had it installed previously so let me just remove that project and then this is just kind of a, a welcome screen um, if you want to open a project install packages and so on but we're going to close all that up and we'll most likely install some packages but we're going to do that later on all right so we can close that for now and then we're going to move on to install git and git bash so let's click this download for windows if you're using a mac you can go to download slash mac and get this same uh, same program all right so that's going to start it's only 35 megabytes so it shouldn't take too long to download all right so we'll open that up and we're just going to go through this it's going to install it in your program files and then for this we'll just leave all the defaults and then when you see this option i i always choose this because this will add optional unix tools to the the regular windows command prompt so for instance ls you saw that i tried doing that in the regular command line and it didn't work um, so it'll add that it'll, it'll add a whole bunch of stuff so i always choose that and then for the rest of this stuff we're going to leave the default uh, open ssl library that's good uh, window style click next next and enable file system caching we'll leave that credential manager we'll leave that and we'll click install all right so that's all set now uh, let's go ahead and click launch git bash and then this is the command line tool so we can make this bigger with con holding control and then uh, scroll the mouse wheel and just to check to make sure that nodes installed we can say node dash v and you can see we have version 6.10.3 and we can also say npm dash v and we have version 3.10.10 .10. so that's it for setting setting up our environment in the next video we're going to start to uh, to build out our application we'll create our package.json file and we'll go from there.